And just continue on. The last equation that you need is back to equation 3. Okay? And here in this equation, the unknown is FAC. Right? So just move FABX to the other side of the equation. And since down here, using geometry, using this triangle, you found out what FABX is. So FAC equals FABX. That's it. Okay? So this analysis procedure is very, very straightforward, very logical. You use this equilibrium condition, right? Some forces equal zero, right? Using two components, right? And knowing the direction of all your forces acting on this joint, right? You'll be able to figure out the unknown, okay? Again, you have two equations, so at most, at most, you can only have two unknowns for a joint, okay? So, this means that. When you begin your analysis for a truss, you should pick a joint where there's no more than two unknowns. Okay? Otherwise, you won't be able to solve for it. Okay. Let's do an example. Let's print some numbers, right? Okay. Let's use the same bridge. Okay, the same truss. Okay? And let's play with the numbers. So let's say this is 30 degree angle. Okay. And let's say this is one meter and one meter. Okay, so it's symmetrical. Okay. And I have this load. And let's say I apply a hundred newton load okay, down the middle. Okay, at joint C. And knowing that, I'd like you to calculate all the forces in the members. Okay? So, which means that I have one, two, three, four, five, five members. So, there are five unknowns I need to solve for. Okay? Using the joint method. So, let's do that. First thing you should do. Draw a free body diagram for the entire truss. Okay, so let's do that here. Free body diagram for the whole thing. Okay, so this is not a joints method just yet, right? So it's just for the whole thing. So let's draw that. So, so label it A, B, C, and D. I have this load is 100 Newton. I have this right here, so I have this reaction force at D, reaction force at A, Y, R, A, X, and apply the equation, right, for this whole free body diagram, right, and this is a, this is a rigid body, right, so just like before, exact same thing, the result is R, D equals one half of the load, and that equals 50 Newton. RAY equals, again, one half the load equals 50 Newton. Okay? And RAX equals zero. Okay? So that doesn't exist at all. Okay. So, I've calculated these two reaction forces and these two end joints. Now I can begin my joint method analysis. Okay, here I have four joints, A, B, C, and D. Question is, which joint should I begin? Which joint should I use right, to begin my analysis? Right, the goal here, again, is to find out all the forces inside all the members. Keep in mind, we only have two equations for each joint, okay? Some forces X equals zero and some forces y equals zero. This means that I can only have at most two unknowns for each joint. Okay. Um, say this joint right here, joint C. How many forces do you have? How many unknown forces do you have? Well, joint C, uh, I have this load. Well, that's known, so that's okay. But at the same time, I have 
these three members okay, coming in contact with joint C. So, so joint C is subject to three additional forces. So total, there are four forces. Okay? Of the four, three are unknown. So that's not good. We don't have three equations. We only have two equations. So joint C is not good to begin with. But joint B, well, joint B has three unknown forces also. FBC, FAB, and FBD. That's no good either. Joint A, joint A is a good joint. The joint A is subject to three forces total. RA, okay, this is called RA, right? FAB and FAC. So three forces of the three, two are known. So it's okay. So joint A is a good joint to start with. Okay. Now from the previous discussion, we can figure out the direction of FAB and FAC. Okay? Decompose FAB this way. So FABY, FAB. Okay. Now that I know this angle, 30 degrees, so I can look at this special triangle. Right? So the special triangle that's made up of these three guys. Right? They're a family that belong together. F A B Y F A B X. I know this angle is thirty degrees. And this is a right triangle, which means that this is automatically sixty degrees. Okay. So <coughs> knowing this, the rest it's just very straightforward. RA I know is 50 Newton. Okay. So let's go ahead and apply the equation. I'm going to use the F, the Y component first. Okay. Because I know RA, that's known quantity. RA is in the Y direction. So it's more convenient if I start out with the y equation. So I have my RA pointing up, so positive, and then negative of negative F A B Y. And that's it. So zero. Therefore, F A B Y equals R A, which is 50 newtons. Okay, knowing FABY being 50 newtons, we can come back to this special triangle, which is this right here, right? To figure out FABX as well as FAB. Okay, so geometry, right? So the special triangle up there. You can use sine and cosine. Okay, so true geometry. So let's say if I use sine of 30 degrees is opposite FABY over hypotenuse FAB. Therefore, FAB equals FABY over sine of 30. Sine of 30 is 0.5. Therefore, F A B Y C over point five. So that's one hundred newtons. Okay? So we saw for one of the unknowns. F A B equals one hundred newtons. Okay. As soon as you've calculated an unknown, I want you to come back to this original picture. That original drawing and write down the answer. FAB is 100, so on this member AB, write down 100 Newton, okay? 
and also indicate whether it's a compression or tension force. Okay? Knowing this direction of AB, right? Just like you know, what I've, uh, I've taught you before, using Newton's third law, right? We'll figure out this FAB actually represents a compression force. So that's how you indicate it. So 100 C for compression. So this indicates that member AB is under a compression force of 100 Newton. Okay. And keep going. All right. So now I've used or sine 30. Let's say can I use maybe cosine 30 um, to help me figure out this FABX? Sure. And so you can use cosine or you can use tangent, right? Tangent 30, all right? To take care of these two guys. So let's do that. So tangent 30 equals FABY equals FAB. X, therefore, FABX equals FABY, which is 50, over tangent of 30 degrees. Okay, can we crowd it? Now, now I can crunch numbers. Right, so 50 divided by tangent of 30 degrees. It gives you 86.6 newton. box around the answer that will help you, uh, you know, visualize everything too. So, <coughs> FABX, you just found, okay, to be 86.6. Now, <coughs> you come back to this kind of forces X equation. So, apply it to the entire free body diagram, I have FAC minus FABX. Right? Only these two guys are in the x direction. That's all. Therefore, the unknown is FAC. FABX. And FABX, which is found from down here, from geometry, in the special triangle, to be 86.6. That's all. That's the unknown. So FAC is 86.6 Newton. I'm using Newton's third law, knowing that FAC goes away from this joint, this means it's tension force. Right? So this means that this member AC is under tension. Okay, so that's how you indicate the results. And we just keep going to the next joint. But which joint?